someone who uses light to paint a scene. It's about creating a film and a storyline that everybody can actually feel. A framer of a director's vision. Visually engaged with a script or a scene. A producer of a visual translation of a scriptwriter's words. Yeah, I'm uh, Craig Whiting, and I'm a writer and director for a, a local film duo uh, called Two Blokes Films. My name is Stephen Hall. I'm a cinematographer, director of photography, a DOP, and I've been a film technician for 30 years. Recently, my work has taken me around the globe, and projects that I've done in the last two years have included uh, feature films, TV drama, and commercials. Feature films have included Fury, a film about the Second World War, Imitation Game, another film about the Second World War, and a TV drama called War and Peace. My name's Neil Horseman. I'm a director of photography and cinematographer. Um, I kind of do a range of work from corporate work to commercial work, um, and I've also done a few short films now. Craft of cinematography is an important aspect of filmmaking, obviously, the most important aspect. But the craft of cinematography to me as a person, as an individual, uh, if I'm speaking from a professional point of view, it means watching how clever someone else can be with a camera that I've never thought of. But as a viewer, watching the craft of cinematography is probably being not aware of the fact there's a camera there. Everything in your film and all the elements in it, the audience have to feel. It's about creating a film and a storyline that everybody can actually feel, understand, feel the drama, the passion. Cinematography means to me is about bringing a scene or a setting to life using light and camera movement and you know the, the choice of lenses and the choice of um, format. And I think you bring all those things together um, to create a mood and an atmosphere for what you're trying to feel. What a good cinematographer looks for in himself is patience, an understanding of what all the other departments do, an understanding of light, an understanding of timing of a scene. Cinematography isn't just about lighting. Cinematography is about framing a shot. Cinematography is about using the camera, whether it be dollying, tracking, jibbing, panning, use on a crane, steady cam. There are a thousand ways you can use a camera. And it's understanding what those uses are best for the scene that you're shooting. And a good cinematographer will learn that through years of watching other people's work and obviously years of practicing um, the art that is cinematography. Uh, it has to be a commitment, um, problem solving, um, a desire to get things done and completed within a, a certain time frame, um, understanding um, because not everything's going to be going your way, uh, never does in my opinion. Um, we're looking at um, uh, compromising, listening to other people. One half of it is you have to be creative. Um, you know, that's essentially what a cinematographer's there to do, to create a mood or a feeling out of light um, and the use of lenses and the use of camera movement. Um, but in the same respect, you're a problem solver. Um, and that's, that's quite a common thing in that wherever you are filming, whether it be in a studio, you're out on location, um, you're filming in an office building, there's always going to be problems and there's always going to be problems with lighting or where you can put cameras, how you can move cameras. You know, framing a shot can say as much about lighting it just by putting someone in a certain place in the screen, how big you put them in the screen, the point of view of them in the screen. If you tower above somebody, obviously they're in a, they're in a, a weaker position because you're looking as the audience at them from a higher position. If you're looking up at somebody as the audience, you're looking from a weaker position. So 
using the camera and where you put it is as much about the craft of cinematography as lighting a scene. And I would look for a combination of all of those things, pace, framing, lighting, and they all mean something to cinematography. Yeah, perhaps the most influential cinematographer that I've seen recently is possibly the film I watched today, or the film I watched the day before that. And I'm not trying to be clever in answering this question, but cinematography evolves all the time, and no matter how many times you go to a cinema or watch a screening, or even watch TV at home, you always see something that is new or see something that's fresh. If you look at it uh, as a you know, a pair of eyes as a viewer instead of somebody who also works in the industry, you can learn a huge amount from maybe just seeing one shot or how someone shot one scene. So if it's something particularly good, then that probably is the most impressive cinematography I've seen to that date. So I'd have to say my most influential cinematographer um, is probably Roger Deakins. Um, he's been in the camera department and working as a DOP for you know, years and years. Most recently, I think um, he's done Sicario, um, Skyfall, Prisoner, um, and he goes right back. I think one of his first sort of bigger films he did was um, Shawshank Redemption. Um, and I don't know exactly what it is about his work that I love, but he's just got this amazing ability to light a scene and it looks so natural. And if you ever see behind the scenes photos from some of his films or behind the scenes um, videos, you'll see that he might use, you know, 20, 30 lights to light a scene, but actually when you see it at the end in the film, it looks like there's not been one light used. And that's what I love about him, that he can, um, he's got this lovely organic and natural feeling to how he lights. Um, he's also great in the way that he moves the camera and he's got an understanding of using alternative camera angles um, to create that feeling and enhance the mood of the film. My favourite film is Bedknobs and Broomsticks. It has so much escapism in it, and I remember seeing it as a child and thinking, isn't this a wonderful world? And, and realising actually what I was watching was not only a film, but that somebody had actually made this. Somebody had created it. And I guess at that point I thought, wouldn't that be a nice way to while away your working life? Um, and unfortunately, you know, be careful what you wish for, because that's what's happened. So, you know, I have wiled away my working life, um, creating things that people go to the cinema and leave some sort of mark on them. Obviously, I haven't created it on my own. I've created it in a team of two or three hundred people. Yeah, uh, King Kong, the, uh, the, the new one. Um, when I first saw that, I just simply thought, just wow, everything about it was uh, everything I would love to produce myself as a, a writer and director. And um, from the, uh, the lighting, um, which created the suspense, the, um, the, the, if you like, the distance, that gave you that real um, dramatic um, scene across the landscape of the uh, Skull Island and all, all the, um, the technical bits with the, uh, the dinosaurs creating that enormous, you could, you could actually feel the energy and, um, of those creatures and the drama and also that, that lovey-dovey thing between the beauty and the beast. Um, you know, it was all done, the lighting and the, uh, the uh, direction of the camera angles really created um, a really good uh, dr dramatic uh, film for me on that one. So I guess a film that really resonates with me from a cinematography point of view, um, it's not actually a Roger Deakins film, it was um, The Shining, which was a Stanley Kubrick film from the 70s. Um, and it was quite different to other horrors of the time and that had come before it. And it had this, this great power and this ability to really draw you into the film. Um, and I was quite young when I saw it, so probably at the time I was sort of captivated by it but I don't, but because I didn't really have an understanding of how cinema worked, I didn't really understand why. And it's only now, since going back and I've rewatched it, look at the techniques and you know read about how things were shot and how things were lit. Um, it kind of now gives me a real appreciation to how good it was. Uh, 
Uh, cinematography is very important to the filmmaking process, obviously. Uh, without a camera, uh, you won't have any film. You'll just have a script of great words and great ideas that are never realised onto the screen. The very essence of what you do is you're there to light a scene. Um, and by that I mean you're there to put light on your subject so that the viewer or the camera um, can see what's happening. You've then got to think about how you would um, use lighting to enhance the mood of the scene, whether it's a comedy and it's all very light, light and brightly lit, or whether it's something more dark and sinister and you're using shadows and contrast to portray that feeling. Uh, cinematography can make a film far better visually than perhaps a poor script would suggest. Uh, and likewise, bad cinematography can make a brilliant script a lot worse visually than the brilliant words would suggest. So essentially, cinematography is the way that a good script is realised into a brilliant visual script.